Hello everyone, my name is Anthony from Anshu Robotics and today I'm excited to share the progress I've made on my drone test rig. Now I'll walk you through what I've been working on, lessons I've learned and my plans for the future. But before diving into all that, let me explain what is a test rig. Now, a drone test rig, when it comes to testing drone dynamics, tuning controller gains or developing the right dynamic systems <clears throat> for your or modeling your, your drone from first principles, you can see it only gets so far with theory. So real world experiments are necessary to uh, collect the data. But testing the drones at home or in an enclosed space can be dangerous. Testing outdoors now requires license and there's always the risk of crashing, which could make the drone unusable for further testing. So how do you address this? <clears throat> and personally, the way I wanted to address this was to create a test rig that allowed me to conduct experiments safely. Now, my rig enables me to do various tasks. One of them is to test various drone configurations, the number of blades, the number of propellers, the number of arms. You know, that's the various configurations you can test, a helicopter or a quadcopter. Perform hardware in the loop testing, identify system dynamics, as I mentioned earlier, tuning the PID controller gains, Experiment with you know, state-of-the-art neural state space models. Um, subject the drones to external disturbance like you know wind. Um, you know I can put a fan and you know test it with with some wind to see how it responds. And also dive into things like system identification, optimal control, robust control, and you know, the whole you know things with you know the control theory in order to make your drone fly smoothly. And honestly, I should be calling this a control system rig because it's not just limited to drones. It's about understanding and refining control systems. <clears throat> so I started to work on my first iteration. And in my first iteration, the design looked promising. At least it looked visually promising from my, from my eyes. But I also quickly realized that it wasn't structurally sound. One of the biggest problems that I faced was I used a circular rods in the design which uh, allowed torque to be applied easily, causing the entire rig to sway when subjected to any load. Now, this instability made it kind of impractical for doing any meaningful test because now my focus was on making the test rig. I was more focused on the test rig than the drone at this point in time. So my second iteration, I started to use square rods for better stability. Because I learned from my previous experience, I designed the test rig using square rods. Now, these are much more resistant to rotation around the axis, and it provides significant better structural stability. And my second iteration has, has been so far very promising. While there is still work to be done to refine the structure, um, and the switching to square rods has addressed one of like the biggest issue from the first design, which is that rotation thing, uh, I'm pretty happy so far with the, um, with the stability of my second iteration. In my first iteration, I used cam levers to clamp the to clamp the rods. Now, one interesting challenge that I faced was with the cam lever design is that it's critical for gripping the rods securely, but under high torque, the rods could rotate around their axis. So if I didn't have that much force, I would still use the design maybe in another project. But for this particular project, it didn't seem to be the most practical solution. And even after adding grips to the cam lever, which I put these rubber rubber grips, <clears throat> the torque was not strong enough uh, to overcome the friction. Uh, the str I mean, the torque was strong enough to overcome the friction. This meant that I need to revisit the design, probably adding internal ridges and considering alternative materials for better grip to a point where, you know, it was not, I was spending too much time into this rabbit hole and was not giving me the return of investment needed. Now, also when it comes to 3D printing with polycarbonates, which is another big issue, um, one of the key challenges I faced in both iteration was wrapping with, with 3D printing polycarbonate blends. Um, <clears throat> larger prints are more prone to wrapping, particularly on my Prusa MK3 S+, Plus, as you can see in the back, which is reliable, but it's not the fastest printer. Now, to mitigate this, I now ensure that no single print takes longer than three hours. For larger components, I designed them. I redesigned them as smaller as modules. As you can see, some of these prints, I was printing them really big, and as a result, um, they just started to wrap. Another thing that I learned is that ambient temperature and enclosure setup matters a lot. If you're printing with materials like polycarbonate, you need a proper enclosed environment. 
to reduce temperature fluctuations because the temperature needs to be consistent throughout to prevent wrapping. Another thing that I was trying to focus on to improve my reliability on printing 3D engineering parts was tolerance. So another critical lesson has been managing measurements and tolerance. So when printing engineering parts, precision is everything. And now for any part requiring precision, like a ball bearing fit, I first print only the, the, the tolerance section, and then I mark the measurements directly on there and I give a tick mark. <clears throat> this makes it easier to track adjustments during iteration. So here you can see 20.2, uh, another iteration would be like, you know, 33.3. And I'll just mark these iterations and the one that really fits because I'm really, you know, just making very micro adjustments um, and to see, you know, whether tolerance is for the print material, for the printer that I have, for the nozzle. Um, but each new printer that I bring or a new material, I would have to redo this whole setup. So now what's my next steps and future plans? Um, now with the structural elements almost complete, at least I, I'm, I'm happy with the, new, with the new and the second iteration. The next step is still uh, integrating onboard electronics, which will include, you know, IMU sensors for attitude sensing, sensing on, the, on the test rig itself. And this could allow for calibration tools so that I can, you know, map the calibration um, to the drone and, and, and reading aligns with the rig, with the rig measurements. So the, so the drone would have its own IMU unit, the rig would have its own IMU unit, and then we can, you know, do the calibration. Now this will also allow me to collect more accurate data and conduct deeper analysis of the drone's performance under different conditions, because now I have sensors on both the drone and, uh, and, the, and the test rig. So there's still a lot of work to be done, uh, but I'm kind of like thrilled, you know, with how things are shaping up. Now this project is, ne is not cheap. Um, the, carb the components, the carbon fiber rods, uh, actually costed a lot. I mean, they were like around two hundred dollars in some shape or form. Um, just doing the first iteration, just the carbon fiber rods itself, getting you know six of them. So any support from you means you know a lot. So if you found this video helpful or interesting, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with others who might be interested. Thank you.